Does that work? Hi everyone, welcome to the last drop. I am Chris. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. Can you all hear me? Go to the chat. Anybody? Looking good? Does that work? That's cool. You, you can. You should be able to hold me. I'm going to stop that preview because that's stupid. And yeah, you can all hear me. Uh, let's go and meet everyone, shall we? Uh, welcome to Whiskey Week Live. A complete and total YouTube failure at the beginning, as usual. Um, I don't know why they do it, uh, but they do. Uh, but yeah, thanks for everybody for coming along. Here's everyone else. Ta da! Wave, everyone. Hello. Andy, why, why are you upside down again, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it, it must be my um, mate, geological. Wi Fi, uh, man. You want to turn your phone back up the other way, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I can try. Did it work? No. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Back up the right way. Uh, I say things always look better when you're on the ceiling. That's true. That's true. Right. I don't have a hat on. Thanks very much, Toby. What is that jersey? <laughs> Brilliant. These are the great questions to start off with. Let's get introducing everyone first. Uh, first on my left is Jason from Bourbon and the Baby, or Jay, I guess. How's Max Hello. doing? <laughs> Max is doing great. He just woke up from a nap, nice. so uh, all's well. <laughs> <laughs> Down below is Vin PF himself. Himself. <laughs> yeah, Vin PF here from No Nonsense Whiskey. Cheers for coming along. Uh, coming along, that's what I say. Cheers for me coming along to you. Yeah, thanks for coming <laughs> along, Vin. Uh, and then down <laughs> that way is Andrew from Prestige Liquids from Down Under. Good morning, everyone. And it is just a, just past 6 a.m. here for those who are asking in the comments. And yes, he is already drinking. Not yet. Standard Aussie, <laughs> Aussie rules, isn't it? I think. Start drinking 6 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, well, we learned that from the Brits, so <laughs> hey. That's because they're all criminals. Um, <laughs> oh. Uh, Where let's get going. <laughs> what are you all drinking? What are you all drinking? I've got a sort, a sort of a script going, so, you know. Yeah, Jay, what are you drinking? I just, uh, I'm doing a bottle kill right now. I just put out the last of this Heaven Hill six year uh, 90 proof. Uh, good stuff. You can get this for like $12 a bottle, and it tastes really good. So it's a nice value, um, cheap. Poor, but you can only get it in Kentucky, so you have to visit Kentucky in order to buy it. Oh, cool. Uh, Vin, what you did? You got something rubbish? Yeah, uh, I got some. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I always say this wrong because I want to say Burnham, but I think Bernheim. the uh, the Americans say Bernheim. Correct. Um, yeah. So and this is uh, and again, I always want to say Bourbon as well, but this is a wheated whiskey. Uh, although for me, it's, it's a little spicy actually, so I think there's probably quite a high rye in there as well. But uh, cool. yeah, it's expensive over here to be fair. It's about 50 quid a bottle, 50, 60 pound a bottle, but um, good stuff. Like it. Nice. Uh, and Andy, I guess something. Something. And for me, yeah, I've got the um, Hakushu 12 year old, so okay. I thought I'd dust off the bottle for, that, um, for, <laughs> for this one today. It's been sitting on the shelf. For a little bit, uh, I really don't want it to finish. <laughs> Fancy whiskey, but um, it, it's getting there. <laughs> for me, uh, I've got the instant twelve-year-old. Um, I posted on Twitter the other day about um, what I should get. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make my way through this bowl <laughs> this week, which is nice. The sludge. Sludge. Cheers. Right. Today's topic, so we're starting off uh, every day uh, of Whiskey Week Live with uh, a topic, um, just for everybody to have a little discussion on, a bit of banter about it, things like that. Um, today's topic is the image of whiskey. So, 
it was difficult to sort of try and get this into a topic title, I guess. Um, but things like uh, whiskey snobbery um, and something else which I completely forgotten, which you know I discussed earlier. Marketing. Oh, marketing. Marketing. marketing, things like that, um, <laughs> which is which is really you know. I think the image of uh, old pipe and slippers is still quite rife in the world of whiskey, and people still look at whiskey as being that old man's drink of a guy sitting there uh, in his pipe and slippers, big red leather chair. I, I did try and get one, but it won't fit in my corner of the kitchen. Um, I've got a red wall. <laughs> it's orange. Um, <laughs> Terracotta, maybe. Is it a terracotta? I guess it's a terracotta Italian place, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this image of of uh, like high end whiskies and things like that have been quite interesting. I've I've done a few bits of research and and looked at a few websites and few blogs where people were sort of discussing the whiskey world in general, I guess. And yeah, I thought it'd be a really interesting topic to start off with. Um I guess uh Jay's pretty new to um whiskey or whiskey tube anyway, and maybe more uh, related to bourbon. Um but what are your your thoughts on that, Jay? I th- I think in the last few years, we've really seen, at least here in the States, a change in that image that you just described. Um, but growing up, that's the image I always saw of whether it, it was a um, a scotch drinker, a scotch whis- whiskey drinker. I, I pictured that image you described. But then we also have here, we have Jack Daniels, where, you know, that's, you, you almost picture more of the, uh, the trailer park uh, image almost. With that, so it's kind of weird both both ends of the spectrum sometimes, um, and even just like three or four years ago here in the states, bourbon at least went through like a hipster movement, where all the hipsters were drinking bourbon, um, but now it's kind of uh, I think spread to where you're just seeing more and more people get into it, and it's not so much just one kind of category of people anymore. A lot more women are getting into it as well. Oh, cool. That's good. Yeah, I mean, women women in whiskey is another very contentious topic, isn't it, really? I mean, there's a few distilleries now with uh, women uh, head distillers. Uh, one, Rachel Barry, is it, brings to mind um, in Glen... Not Glen Allergy. Glen Allergy? Somebody tell me. Greg, not sure. Greg will, I'm sure he's uh, in. Ask Greg. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, Glenn Alkley's not. That's Billy, isn't it? Come on, Greg. I don't know. Um, it's probably quite a delay, isn't there? But yeah, women in, in whiskey is obviously a big thing. Uh, I mean, uh, Anthony and uh, Nikki over on New Dream Drinker. She's obviously involved. You've got uh, Sam with I Whiskey. She wines. They're quite big. Um, the old... Uh, old i'm not saying she's old but whiskey bitch was obviously quite a big big channel back in you know a couple of years ago i don't know why she decided to stop or not but she she obviously developed a load of following um and really showed that women in in whiskey can you know really happen I and mean, it's not it shouldn't be this boys club talking to all four of us on the screen <laughs> <laughs> well represented i think I was going to say, I think you'll have to leave Vin out of this one because he's breaking new ground and just had a woman feature on his live, on one of his live streams. So there you yeah, go. That's true. That's true. You're a pioneer. <laughs> well, I'm sure uh, Nikki will be on tomorrow. <laughs> and at least uh, probably Sunday as well. That's cool. Uh, so what, what, what do you see the image as, Andy um, or Andrew? Do you mind, Andy? No? Uh, no, whatever, mate, I'm all good. 
Yeah, what do you see the image? What does what's Australia think of the image of whiskey? I mean, it's. I mean, we we have like Fosters. I mean, that's what we envisage Australian beer as. Like people just in, yeah. you know, in the outback with a silly hat on and corks and stuff like that. You know, but that's what that's what Fosters is branded as. And you got people on a beach going, Uluru, stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, image and the marketing yeah. behind it is is really quite interesting. I mean, how does yeah. that image come across in Australia? Well, I was going to say that's the other thing as well. Since you mentioned Fosters, ironically, no one in Australia drinks Fosters at all. Well, you saw um, I, mean, I can't like, even. Actually, wine is owned by Fosters. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I actually saw it inside a shop. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say when it goes for the whole like whiskey um, thing again, I, I guess there is always, like you guys mentioned before, the, the typical old man's drink sitting in an armchair. But I think that is also a bit more of a stereotype um, brought in, I guess, from. Um, so I guess from the US and the UK as well, um, from what I, like, it, that was also an idea that I kind of had before I started getting into this. Uh, but then once I started on Instagram, cause that's, I started on Instagram before I started on, um, on YouTube and I quickly realized that that really wasn't the case. Um, uh, I guess as Jay mentioned before with bourbon, I guess there is that kind of, um, that hipster movement. Um, going along with it, uh, I mean, I know I've, I've jumped on the bandwagon <laughs> as well. So, um, yeah, so I, I think that kind of old mentality is slowly um, getting phased out. And I think that probably has a big um, thing to do, I guess, with um, guys like um, Daniel and Rex, for example, in the, in the Whiskey Vault and even uh, the Scotch Test Dummies for really – pushing the, the idea that um, uh, that whiskey is an, an every person's drink. It's not for, say, old people or it's not just a man's drink. It, it's something that everybody can enjoy. So, um, yeah, and I think that's probably the good thing about where we're at at the moment. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely... Scotch as a whole, I mean, obviously I'm quite new to the Scotch world myself and there's so many different variations. And I mean, I make my wife over there try everything, uh, even though she's waving. Hello. <laughs> Finn's waving back. That's weird. <laughs> like that, shouldn't I, like? Um, <laughs> But, yeah, there's so much variation that I think anyone can almost find a whiskey they'd like. Does that make sense? That's quite... Definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you go from bourbons, but all the bourbons have different mash bills, so they can be spicy, they can be smooth. And then scotch, I mean, it's just a minefield, isn't it? But of different ones. I mean, this Deanston is just completely different to pretty much everything else I have on the shelf. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really cool. It's... It's great, and I think that's the image that it maybe needs to portray more, is that, you know, anyone can find a whiskey. What What are your thoughts, influencer, Bin PF? <laughs> <laughs> what, what a terrible, what? terrible word. <laughs> It's, I mean, influencer says to me, like, uh, you know, it's the kind of, it's the Instagrammers that don't have jobs that just run around going, like, just, I don't know, just to get their boobs out and they get loads of followers. But, <laughs> um, get boobs out. No, um, but someone called me it actually fairly recently because technically they bought a bottle based on something I said. And I was like, well, I mean, you can't argue with the definition of the word influencer, right? But it's just, I think it's the, the connotations of the word. But, um, but yeah, whiskey snobbery, man, it's, it's something that's uh, a really good subject. And I think that uh, a lot of the YouTubers aren't really like that, which is great. And it's the reason why I started doing it. Although uh, you guys probably, I'm not sure if you start getting through the negative comments yet. But um, when they come through, man, that's a that's something else that is. And um, I think, I because I use a Glencar now like everyone else does, but I didn't start doing that. 
Um, and it was just easier to use the Glencarn because every video I put out without a Glencarn on it just got so much abuse for not having one. And I never get anybody saying, oh, dude, why, why are you using that? Why don't you just use a tumbler? So even though I don't drink from a Glencarn ordinarily, I use on my video just to avoid that nonsense, basically. Um, it's good. I mean, when I'm assessing for the videos, I do use a Glencarn. But when I'm drinking casually, it's always a tumbler every time. Yeah. But yeah, we, we're confronted by whiskey snobbery all the time. Do you think um, that, um, yeah, the whiskey snobbery of a Glen, yeah, Glen Can is a, a whiskey snob thing, isn't it? It's like, well, it's, you're, not, uh, you're not drinking yeah. whiskey. It's just a funny thing, isn't it? Like how, um, the, my favourite thing about the Glen Con, although it's becoming a kind of industry standard, it isn't the industry standard. And um, people think that it is. It's actually the, uh, the the stemmed ISO tasting glass, which they use for wine. Mm. You know, that's the, that's what the professionals use when they're assessing, when they're judging, whatever. Um, so when it's when people say you have to use a Glencairn, otherwise you're not getting the same flavours, blah blah blah. You think, well, I'm not sure how true that really is, especially for the layman. You know, like, and I can still consider myself that, still learning every day, still trying new things. Uh, I wouldn't even begin to tell someone that their glassware was wrong. It's just a bit of a funny thing. Mm. Well, it's like the whole, yeah, drink it however you want to drink it. But when it comes to what you're drinking it in, it's got a bit of Glen Can, otherwise it's just <laughs> wrong. Yeah, it's well, true. Even um, with bourbon, I mean, isn't it, Jay? I mean, that, even with bourbon, they're like, it's got to be in the Glen Can almost now. Oh, yeah. it's It's really... Vin said it perfectly. If people will comment on what you're drinking out of, um, I, I, I have uh, these small snifter glasses that I like to use um, that I think work really well for you know getting all the aromas and for it's a lot easier to drink out of than a Glencairn. But yeah, if, uh, if people see you using something other than a Glencairn, they they're down your down your throats about it. Well, Alan's just mentioned the Copita, which I got from the um, cognac show that we nicked in <laughs> just well yeah but that's that's not nicking it you've paid well we didn't pay for entry did we no, but, but um that comes with as part of the ticket yeah exactly well, yeah. I, it's, it's the uh, it's the trade day isn't it that's what that's one of the things i love about doing this thing right is is getting access to stuff like trade days what a ridiculous thing you know all they do is sit in front of a camera for five minutes twice a week and they've let me come into a show for free but, <laughs> but you're an influencer i'm on the list you're an influencer <laughs> influencer <laughs> oh What's that? i'm just trying to see if i've got a copy to i think the closest i've got to that here, here is a uh, yeah. uh scotch mild whiskey society nosing glass which actually is really thin uh, it's a lot thinner than a glencarn so if you try the, the cast current stuff which is all the uh, smws does yeah it's just like straight into your nostrils um so i don't actually like drinking out of this at all um just a nice little glass piece though i was gonna say really at the end of the like, at the end of the day i, I know for myself I, when i buy a new whiskey um look, i do prefer to use a glen can because i know for myself i do tend to get um i guess like the the better tasting notes from it but also, at the same time, when you get familiar with the whiskey and you move to a different type of glass, say like with you, Vin, as well, I do prefer to use a, a tumbler as well. Um, once I find that once you're familiar with the whiskey, yeah, even when you use a tumbler, you will get those exact same notes that you would from the Glen Can. But then sometimes you'll even pick out something completely different because I, I guess maybe different glassware or uh, I guess whatever mood you're in as well. So, I mean... At the end of the day, who's to say um, who's right and who's wrong about what you're comfortable with using? That's right. And yeah, uh, should we go to the chat? Let's go to the chat, shall we? Let's see who's in because we haven't done that yet. It's a bit silly, but you know, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Toby's in. Whiskey shared. Ebhead's in. Hi Rolf, how are you doing? Uh, Nikki's in for New Dran Drinker. Anthony's probably getting in about five minutes. Yeah. Be cool. Uh, ear Whiskey. Uh, if you haven't heard of Ear Whiskey, I mean it only came live today I think, but that's Matt uh, from Castmate. Um, he's doing a podcast channel now on YouTube. 
That's cool. Uh, Greg Wazin from Greg's Whiskey Guide. Uh, he'll be in on Wednesday. Hi, right, Greg. Uh, Alan, the whiskey friend. Hello. Hey, Alan. <laughs> hey, Alan. I'm the whiskey friend. <laughs> uh, Andy C, how are you doing? Uh, did I mention Toby Whiskey Shed? I did, yeah. Uh, Society yep. Dweller, welcome. Uh, some guy called No Nonsense Whiskey. Uh, who's that guy? Who's that guy? My name is Wim PF. Walk him. My name is Wim PF. <laughs> no, don't do that. My name is Wim PF. My name is Wimpia. <laughs> My name is Wimpia. My name is Wimpia. Yeah, uh, that guy. Uh, Antonio's in Whiskey Quests. Hi, Antonio. He'd be on Saturday. Uh, do, 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 do. Carry on down. Uh, Johnny's in from Spirits People. Welcome, Johnny. He'll be on Thursday. A uh, good giveaway on Thursday, actually, as well. Be cool. Uh, and X blank. I'll drink out of a jock strap if it gets me drunk enough. How lovely! Cheers to that. <laughs> Is that with or without be like a cup poster. involved? The jock strap. I don't know. It'd be like a filtering system, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no. Doesn't the jock strap hold the cup? Doesn't it? You know. Well, is that me? I don't, oh. know. I don't want to think about it too much. <laughs> think about that junk holding device. <laughs> oh, I think I saw a question from um, Toby earlier, which looked interesting. Let's see if I can find it. Do you find people give you a strange reaction when they find out for the first time that you drink whiskey? Yeah, go. I get a when people find out I drink whiskey at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> You're on Scottish uh, time, right? You're on Scottish time. Scottish time, yeah. Yeah I, don't, yeah, I don't think I've ever really had a weird reaction. Um, no, I can't say that I have. No. It's been, it's a lot more, uh, like I said, it's a lot more popular now i think so um yeah people don't kind of turn their noses at it as much hmm. so i don't know if you guys have gotten this much at all but i know i've copped it a few times um especially like when you mention to people that you're doing a a, a whiskey youtube channel or instagram page hmm. and like oh so you're an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> yeah you drink it's like just, each day Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Roll up for the answers. It's like, yeah. It's like, do yourself a favor, watch all these videos that everybody's putting out, and you can see that alcoholism is the furthest from, uh, like, from people's minds. I, I don't know why there is still that stigma involved as well. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Right, uh, next on my list is blends Ooh. as a image of whiskey, blends equals bad and single malt equals good. <laughs> so yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's Bring a negative down. captain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate that, I really do hate that. I mean, I read an article today, uh, it was a girl, she went to uh, a whiskey tasting, I think, um, and she was saying that, like, the guy literally said to her, don't buy blends, they are, none of them are good, you must buy single malts, and they have to be aged a long time uh, to be any good, and that, that, that was like a, a proper, you know, a Whiskey tasting, this guy was clearly maybe in the industry, and that was literally what he was selling, telling everyone, which just seems like a ludicrous, ludicrous statement sometimes. I mean, all I do is drink blends mainly, because <laughs> they're the cheapest, but I mean, you've only got to look at Douglas Lang, I mean, uh, been Douglas Lang ambassador, um, we'll tell you, I mean... The Douglas Lang blends are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 
Uh, Rock Oyster is one of my favourites and probably will always be uh, Rock Island even. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't see why there is this stigma around blends. I mean, they, they're, they're what the industry was built on almost. I mean, you go to, I mean, we went to uh, Strathclyde Distillery and half their stuff was about uh, how the blend industry, you know, basically created the, you know, the whiskey industry as such. So to ignore blends and to say that they're not good is just stupid. I went to a very similar tasting one time where the guy, he, did, he wasn't that extreme about it. But he did say that uh, he he actually calls himself, I don't know if it's an actual real title, but he calls himself a single Maltarian. And, uh, <laughs> but he was, he was saying the same thing that, you know, he pretty much only drank single malts, um, yeah. you know, blends. He didn't go out and say that blends were absolutely terrible, but, you know, he said he prefers not to drink blends. And, and, and yeah, he was kind of there to educate people about whiskey and, and that's kind of the, the education that was taking place I, you know, I guess the unfortunate thing is that's just his own opinion more than anything uh, right I mean, I mean most of us started off on blends I mean if you think about it, really the majority of people when they started whiskey um, were, were probably drinking Johnny Red or Johnny Black uh, or say even um, Shivers Regal. I mean, like I put, I've showed on the camera before. I look, I've just poured myself a glass of the Shivers Regal Mizanara, and that's a blend, and it's absolutely incredible. I would say, in my opinion, anyway. But um, and like it's and I'll I mean, I'll I'll preach that if somebody came up to me and asked me, oh, how's that? And I was like, it's beautiful. Try it. Here you go. Have some. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's a it's a preference at the end of the day. Yeah, I think the thing that really annoys me is that people forget like like a, a staple like this, you know, the Glenfiddich twelve year old. That's a blend. It's a blend of Glenfiddich single malts up to uh, over twelve years old. You know, they get all that liquid together. So why the fact if it's two different distilleries, why would it make any difference? You know, if it's picked with care. A great example is the Monkey Shoulder. Right, that's massive over in the US right now. It's mm -hmm. massive over here. It's all right. It's it's good for its money, but that's the whole point, isn't it? It's it's far better than things like your famous grouse and your bells and all that. that you know the, the stuff that actually gives blends a bad a bad name. But most people forget that every whiskey, apart from a single cask, nearly is a is a is a blend of some kind. Yeah, yeah, they're all a mixture, aren't they? Yeah. No matter what. And look, I don't as well, man. I I would pick Monkey Shoulder over most um, over most budget single malts. I think it's a fantastic whiskey. I mean, and as Vin mentioned, for the price point as well, it's incredible. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with it. Mm. Uh, Johnny's well, asking. Freddie, Freddie No over over at Jim Beam is starting to really do a lot with blends and trying to help change that image with his little book releases too. So I, I think hopefully that's going to start changing as well. Cool. Is that yeah. before or after the fire? Uh, both. <laughs> well, now they're going to be releasing their latest line of smoked whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In beam smoke. <laughs> uh, Johnny from Spirits People is asking, what are our thoughts on celebrity endorsed whiskey? So I'll see what you got. Jim Beam done, was it Mila Kunis? Um, we over here. What Haig was Beckham. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, Andy's just done Long Branch, which is Matthew McConaughey, yeah. who my wife actually thinks sounds like Daniel from <laughs> Whiskey Vault. <laughs> 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 She's like, "Why are you watching Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> <laughs> not watching Whiskey Vault? Well, why not? <laughs> so, I'd, I'd, yeah, that'd be cool." Um, I don't know, it's all part of marketing, isn't it? Um, you put somebody's name to it, people are going to look at it, people are going to drink it because they've they've endorsed it as such. So. I guess that's the thing, at the end of the day as well, a lot of them probably are done purely for, um, I guess, money-making. 
Uh, I mean, I have never tried it yet myself, so I don't have my own opinion. But from what I've heard, I think was it um, Conor McGregor? I think released the um, Ali twelve, his rank proper twelve, high, proper twelve, and apparently that was horrendous. And then you've got um, bands say like Scorpions that have endorsed. I think was it McMira, and that's supposed to be absolutely incredible. Uh, I think even Bob Dylan has his own range of bourbon as well now, doesn't he? Heaven's Store, yep. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I, I've heard good reviews about it. Yeah. Yeah, you got, like a, what was it, Wayne Gretzky as well, the um, ice hockey guy. He's got like a whole brand of of whiskey, Canadian yeah, whiskey. That awesome. Does that count? Does Canadian whiskey count? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Greg? Well, is Canadian whiskey all that bad? I was say, is Canadian whiskey really all that bad? No, 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 no. It just no. seems to get no, really it, bad rap. It's, it, well, it's, it's that again, isn't it? It's that snobbery. Where's that snobbery mm, come from? Yeah. Did like Canadian whiskey or well, Canadian? I mean, it's technically, you know, half of it's like not rye, but it is rye, and it's called rye, but it's not. It's all a bit weird there, but um. I think uh, JP Wises do a lot of really good stuff, don't they? That they got that was the Doc guy, Doc something rather. They seem to be churning out some really nice stuff. A dissertation, I think, is one of their most uh, sort of re rewarded, like prized whiskies. Um, yeah. That, well, yeah. Well, we're not going to go on about Game of Thrones whiskies. Who's had one? Does anybody have one? Yeah. I stand by that the Lagerbullen 8 is actually a really nice whiskey. Okay. <laughs> but that's the, that's the only one that I've tried. And, I mean, I guess we all know how much Vin loves White Walker, so... <laughs> yeah. There was that. <laughs> well, the, I mean, um, before I did the White Walker, I was going to do a video called um, "Why I'm Not Going to Buy the Game of Thrones Whiskies," and I did all my research, uh, and I, I, what I did is I got every bottle that was in the range, and I tried to find an equivalent of the same distillery, like normally produced, and almost every single one of them had something that was comparable, that was either the same price or less. Uh, I mean, like, you know, Lagavulin 8, for example, I know they've got, got, got you know, the, the 12 and the 16. And the prices varied, but there was only really one or two in the whole range that were actually good value. But things like the, um, I forget which one it was now, I think it was the uh, the Card the Cardu Gold, uh, or whatever, it, whichever version it was, the House Lannister. It, it literally was just a rebranded Cardu Gold for another £15. Yeah. It was exactly yeah. the same liquid, announced, written down, it's the same liquid. And it's just, it was such an awful, cynical thing. But Diageo played it so well because they made everybody think that it was limited. And loads of people went out and bought it. And, was, and then it was on, um, you know, like uh, post sale, resale for a ridiculous stuff. amount of money. And then they released a whole other batch of them out of nowhere yeah. that apparently they didn't have before. And now they're uh, releasing again, aren't they? In a month or yeah, so. Yeah, because it's not limited edition, people. That's what I say. Limited could mean anything. That White Walker, they sold a million and a half bottles of that worldwide. A million and a half. And they have the audacity to call it limited edition. So you've got me going now. That's, <laughs> did, did they, did they That's what we want. That's what we want. Angry Ben. 200 of them. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for quick fire questions, people. This is a bit of a surprise for everyone. So I'm going to go around each each of you. I've got five questions. Nice little five questions. And yeah, you can answer as quick as you can. I'm going to go Jay, Andrew, Vin. Ready? You ready? Ready. You ready? Yep. Question one. Favorite current whiskey? Russell's Reserve, 10-year. Andy? Uh, I would say uh, Long Branch. <laughs> ben? Whatever I've got in my glass today, Bernheim. Bernheim. Weighted. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your go-to distillery? Wild Turkey. Lafroy. 
Oh, but probably like Cotswolds or something because yeah, they're was, so close that to was me. Obvious, bloody hell. Yeah. I think we all could have guessed that one, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your favourite video you've done? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, pass. I don't know. <laughs> they're like children. I, I can't pick a favourite one. <laughs> And if, for me, crikey, fellas, that would have to be my review of the Johnny Walker 12 year old sherry cask edition. Get that one in ya. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. I love the Steve Irwin. <laughs> ben? Uh, for me, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say the White Walker video just because it's done so well for me. But my actual favourite videos were the old um, outtake videos I made before I started putting them in my. Uh, credits uh, and no no one watched them it was um it's a bit of a shame but they're they're there to watch still brilliant when i started out <laughs> there you go everybody go and watch them go and watch them yeah right your favorite non-whiskey drink uh i'd have to go with like a, a rum punch cool andy beer 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 <laughs> beer, yeah. beer. Yeah. What kind of beer? Bastards. Beer, mate. Not bastards. VB. <laughs> Bit of VB. Oh, no. <laughs> the 4X. Can't go wrong with the good old Tui's extra dry, mate. <laughs> Tui's, ah, yeah, Tui's, mate. Vin? Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm on a bit of a cognac uh, trip at the minute, so um, I'm going right. to start doing some videos on those soon. <laughs> Air 5. <laughs> cool. And last one. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. I'm all for it. <laughs> ben, I guess no. That's the epitome. <laughs> this question is the epitome of snobbery. <laughs> epitome of snobbery. Pineapple on pizza. I, I only say no because I don't like pineapple. Oh. But if Thanks. you like pineapple, get it on your pizza. I don't. It doesn't bother me. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't tell someone not to have it on their pizza, but I'll get it off mine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Cool. Right. That was cool. That was quite interesting, wasn't it, as well? <laughs> Throw it in there. What bit of a bomb. I've got sound effects. That's cool. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go. Let's, let's discuss a bit of an elephant in the room after that bit of joviality. Um, McCallan, or The McCallan. Now... I, McCall the the McCall the McCallan the McCallan, um, Monkey. is supposedly Monkey. or comes across as like the pinnacle of of whiskey. Um, their marketing is obviously it's the high end of it, um, and is ends up in like TV shows and stuff like that because of it. I think. Um, I remember specific scenes from like How I Met Your Mother and stuff like that. Um, but every time I've gone to buy a bottom of the range um, Macallan, people have told me just to avoid it because it's just not good. And but price wise, it's up there with like a Deanston Twelve, a Glendronic Twelve. Um, a Kilcarran 12, which is a VIN recommended whiskey, which is one of my favourites this year. Um, just really, really good whiskies. Um, but price wise, they, you know, they're the same as this, you know, like I think it's Macallan Gold, is it? Um, yeah. But supposedly, I mean, I haven't tried it, so I mean, I can't really comment too much, but people were telling me that. It's just nowhere near the level of, of the ones that I've just mentioned. So, I mean, why does McAllen have this image? And is it purely down to marketing? Or is it the fact that their juice is good? What do you think? I've only had the McAllen 12, and I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think it knocked my socks off. Um, but I don't know. I'm not versed enough in that world to give you a, a solid answer uh, other than it seems to be one because I also work in a, a, a bourbon bar um, and it seems to be one that people ask for a lot mm. so 
Um, it, it has name, recogni uh, name recognition above all else. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's that, that reputation, that image of Macallan that, that comes through before the taste. Yeah, definitely. I think for myself, uh, say like Jay, I think I've only tried the Macallan 12, uh, I think it was the, the double wood or double oak, whichever one it was called, I can't remember. But um, again, for me, I liked it. I think it is a nice whiskey, but again, it is one of those ones where if you take, for example, uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label, it's got one of, it's one of those ones that majority of people will tell you that it's rubbish or that it's no good, but because it has been marketed that well, um, people automatically associate it with being like at the hierarchy of, um, of whiskey. Is this, but, is this a dig at Matt because he bought one recently? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what are you doing, Matt? Oh, he bought... Johnny Walker Blue, oh my god, it's rubbish, why have you bought it? <laughs> but then I think that's, that's, yeah. that is it as well, isn't it? Because maybe the snobbery of us as people that are looking into the world of whiskey, um, reputation in the world of whiskey of Johnny Walker Blue is not as good as the reputation of Johnny Walker Blue outside of the fabric community that we have. I mean, that's... I think, uh, I was going to say, for, when it comes to Johnny Walker Blue label, for example, I mean, I've had a bottle of it myself. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, but my biggest problem with it is the price point. And that's the same with Macallan. Um, I want to be able to try other Macallan, um, let's say the other um, range of Macallan whiskies. But when you go and compare it to something else, the the price point is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, I can buy two of these other things for the same price that I'm buying one of this. So what am I going to go for? I mean, that's what most people are saying in the chat. I mean... Uh... Gregoire saying he respects the heritage back in the 90s, but now it's just way less good, the level of quality. Um, uh, Rolf Ebhead is saying that he'll never get the 18 or 25 Macallans because they're just ridiculous prices. And I mean, if you compare, I mean, he's comparing it to uh, Glendronach 18, which is a, like a crazy sherry bomb in your head. Um, there's not much that can compete with that, to be honest, sherry-wise. Um, so why would you buy almost the same buried whiskey, I guess? For, you know, I don't know what the price difference is, but I imagine Macallan's a lot more than that Glendronach 18. What say you? I know, I've, I've seen the Glendronach 12-year-old um, um, here go for about, uh, about 94 to $95 Australian here. And again, obviously, that, that is expensive, but um, that is still relatively cheap for the Glentronic 12. Glentronic 12. Mm. Uh, but then you've got the Macallan 12-year-old, for example, which was, I think, about $120. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I would prefer the Glentronic. Yeah. And, it's, and obviously, it's a, it's a cheaper product. But not, not a drop in quality, though. No, by far, I would say it's an increase in quality. You want a hiccup, are you? Wife's got hiccups. Been drinking. Have we all? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's it's a difficult. It, well, it's not a difficult one, is it? But it's maybe why we're doing this is that. We want to maybe educate people that, you know, there's so much there to try and you can get a better product for, for less money. Is that why some we do it sometimes? I don't know. It's the question of value, right, isn't it? It's, it's um, I mean, more power to somebody who spends £150 on a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue, carrying on the analogy. 
Uh, if they think it's the best whiskey they've ever tried, then then, then why not? You know, um, to say uh, if if they then poured me a glass of it and I said I didn't like it so much, if they said that I was wrong, I have an issue with that. Um, people spend their money how they like, and we'll we'll never we'll never take down a, a massive thing like Macallan when people are are buying them. But um, but yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, I I've been trying to push independent um, whiskies on my channel a lot, uh, and as I've seen there, uh, there's a pe couple of people having a a to and a fro in the comments section about things like that. Uh, I think Ebhead is the guy who's, who's who's saying it. Like um, Caden Heads is a great example. Mm. You can get some 25, 26 year old uh, whiskies from lesser known distilleries for less than 100 pounds. Um, but you know the, the the whole reason why whiskey is so popular at the moment is not because of us. You know the, we're the we're the kind of the the, the, the top percentage of uh, of the fans. Um, the the bulk of it goes to these massive massive. Uh, companies like Diageo, a great example, you know, and why would they put something out at 46% when they could put it out at 40 and, and get another few hundred bottles out of it? Yeah, exactly. um, it's, it's the cynical businessman. Um, but I personally, I think that will change, you know, all spirits ebb and flow throughout history. I think that's going to change over the next few years when all these new distilleries that are coming out of nowhere, uh, they're having to fight that by putting out craft and quality um, some of the stuff like Cotswolds again, sorry to mention it again, but um, after three years, what they've done in a cask beats the crap out of most things that come out of uh, a 40% a sc a scotch at 12 year old. You know, it's even like, you know, Glenfiddich, you know, it's a, it's a good whiskey. It's got its place for sure, but it's not a blow your mind whiskey. It's not the one that you give someone to say, look, this is the best whiskey you're ever going to drink. Oh, so they're, they're so, safe, aren't they? They're a, they're a set, yeah. set flavour profile. There's no bad thing about it there's no amazing thing there's nothing no inspiration behind it but it's not a bad whiskey um it's yeah it's in that safe band i guess Does that makes sense yeah i think that's the important distinction i mean we talked about um scoring whiskey on my channel fairly recently mm. uh and um, one of my issues with scoring whiskies is that nobody ever seems to use the bottom 50 percent of their scoring um, band, so I mean that's one of the reasons why I don't score. Uh, apart from like I had Malt on my on my show, and they um, they were they use everything, so they they'll say like a, a four out of ten is a drinkable whiskey. Yeah, it's not a great one, it's not a bad one, it's fairly drinkable. Two out of ten, you're talking about like the, the awful stuff. Like, we, have you guys tried Fujikai ten yet? No, no. <laughs> uh, I, I saw a bottle of it in a shop once, and I did you think about buying one. Just to to say again, Andrew. I was like, you've influenced me not to try it. <laughs> no, I, I want you to try it. I want you to try it. It genuinely is the worst whiskey I've ever tried in my life. And I don't often say bad whiskey. I say a whiskey I don't like. Um, but that one there, it truly is diabolical. And I, I want everybody to try it so they can share the pain of it. It's a good reference point, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's what really makes me laugh. Like when people say, uh, I, I forget what I covered now, or like, but um, anything, it could be anything. You know, like I've got here quite a. I've got this Mac, McMira Mac, um, and it's marketed towards young people. It's not a particularly good whiskey by any stretch. It isn't a bad one. It's cheap, uh, and it's it's marketed to people that aren't us. Um, but I can't I can only, I can't honestly say it's a bad whiskey. But some people would say it's a bad whiskey, and then I say to them, try the Fujikai Ten before you call anything <laughs> else bad. An aeroplane or a lorry? Oh yeah, that's me. That is. So I've got my window okay. open. Are you next to like Midlands Airport? <laughs> Uh, quite close to Birmingham oh, okay. Airport, to be fair. Yeah, about, about fifteen miles. Sorry about that. It's roasting in this room. As if you watch my stream <laughs> with um, New Jam Drinker, then uh, it's uh, it's hot in here. So yeah, I've got the window I, I haven't figured out how to do contrast yet on the things because I was going to make you really red. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> my name is Jim Pierre. Well, you wouldn't survive very well. Pierre. Pierre. My name is Jim Pierre. <laughs> no. My name is Jim no, I don't Pierre. like the heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh let's let's hit the comments shall we um so one uh dave from new dram drinker is uh <laughs> jay have you ever been to england or do you have plans to i have not um i would love to i don't currently have plans to but once that you know sweet youtube money starts kicking in <laughs> uh, any day now yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get that trip planned and and we can all uh we can all have a drink together once you're up at except Dumb for Andrew. Level. 
Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I have been to your, I've been to Germany and I've been to France, uh, oh. but that's, that's all I've been to uh, in Europe. Cool. Who else we got? We got, I think everybody's having chats to themselves. Send me a sample. How is hot in English terms? I wonder. That's Luna. I think she's. You're in Spain, aren't you, Luna? I think. I in Germany. Germany? Really? I think so. Oh. Pretty sure. Um, well, when I say hot, I mean. See, the people always give me a hard time about this heat thing because um, <laughs> it's like it's, it's relatively cold over here right now isn't it it's night time it must be about 15 16 18 degrees outside but a bit less than that but i've got studio lighting people studio lighting <laughs> and it's hot under these lights I've, oh, yeah if i did i did this off camera to new jam drinker the other day let me turn something off oh yeah so it's important it's important what about the overhead um, one yeah oh the overhead one. okay i'll do that one as well if you want Oh, that's much better. Actually, that's not bad. That's all right. That's still okay. Yeah, I might leave mm -hmm. that. That's good because it doesn't then reflect off um, India. Oh yeah, <laughs> I get that question a lot as well. Why is India a different color on the map? Because you've scrubbed it out. Scratch map. Pay attention, people. For, for What's all the back sun in this face right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 sun is rising here now. <laughs> really, Andy? <laughs> You picked a bad spot there, my friend. <laughs> yeah. The annoying thing is now I just can't be bothered relocating. <laughs> that that red that wall's still not red, mate. <laughs> now come and say it to my wall. <laughs> I will. Next time in Australia. Let's see. Maybe I can. <laughs> He's moving. Uh, is that? Right, the next thing on my or... image list, the image of whiskey, is the colour. Colour? Colour of whiskey. I mean, you get Dalmore, for instance, is marketed and has that deep, dark colour that's unctuous and you want, makes you want to drink it, you know? That sort of thing. That sort of marketing, marketing color, isn't it? That's what that's what it is. It's darker and deeper than anything else on the shelf. Well, one it's of the reasons, cold, but it's mainly coloring. <laughs> yeah, one of the reasons I prefer bourbon, um, or or just really like bourbon, is that you there is no artificial coloring allowed. Mm. Um, so I, I I think it's very. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a it's a bad whiskey if they add artificial coloring. But I, I think it's it's very misleading and just not authentic. Uh, so I really personally dislike when when uh, whiskeys are have, have artificial coloring. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I don't mind the coloring so much. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, it, I find it quite cynical for sure. But it's it's the least of the sins when it comes to stuff like Dalmore and Macallan. I think. Um, it's. I think it, it does annoy me. Uh, I've got a good example here. I'm, I'm almost certain. I might be wrong. I'm almost certain that Ardbeg colours their whiskey mm. um, because on the front they just put non-chill filtered on this. Yeah. But it's in a green bottle. What is the point yeah. of colouring that whiskey? <laughs> There's no point <laughs> at all. In case you've got two and you pour them out side by side. <laughs> it's, yeah. But it's, well, it's a fantastic. I was say I find that with the Ardbeg, once you pour it, though, it is actually quite pale. But I guess that's the the same with Laphroaig, I suppose. Laphroaig is a pale whiskey, and I think that's still coloured, isn't it? That's coloured as well, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's um, and it's exactly like Jay said about um, bourbons. I like that because their rules make it perfectly clear what's in it and what's not. Uh, I don't care about colouring in whiskey. I just wish that it was enforced to put it on the label. You know, you buy a bottle in Germany, it'll have with colour on it, on the, on the bottle. If you buy a bottle in an airport that could have a German market, it'll have it on the label. The Scotch, malt, uh, the Scotch Whiskey Association should be forcing distilleries to put it on their label, just for full parity, because otherwise it's a lie. 
Uh, Ebe saying he thinks that McCallum is never coloured. I don't know for sure. I don't cover McCallum on the channel because I don't really like their liquid. Uh, so I don't know for sure if it is or not. But they're saying it was coloured but probably isn't now. But no certainty, says Greg. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the whole point, isn't it? It's the no certainty thing that annoys me. Um, yeah. And if, if everything else if, on my tick boxes is covered, I won't care about colouring. But it, as a complete package, I wish that they didn't. It's the long and short. A few, a few, I mean, obviously Roy and uh, Ben, Whiskey Geek, uh, congratulations on your baby, by the way. Um, well done, Ben. Uh yeah, they've recently done a test on on E150 and the differences of it. And I think uh, Whiskey Vault done a, well, Whiskey Tribe done a, a video about colouring where they made Daniel drink a whole glass of it. Which is quite disgusting, but <laughs> I think it does. It influences the liquid as well, doesn't it? Um, seems to, um, depending on how much is in there, obviously. But you wonder what. I mean, obviously, you said earlier, Finn, about Downmore getting independent bottlings of Downmore because their mm. stuff's uncoloured. Um, and you'd wonder what a Downmore 12 would look like and taste like if it wasn't coloured, whether it would be any better. Yeah, I mean, I had one. Um, I've got the box up here somewhere. I don't know if you can see. You probably can't see that off camera. Uh, it's a Chieftain's. Uh, Nineteen-year-old Dalmore. I did. I did cover it on the channel. So if you are interested, then feel free to go and dig that that uh, ancient video up. Um, but it was fairly pale. You know, it was it was a, a decent coloured whiskey. There was nothing wrong with it at all. But the liquid itself, the taste of it, was absolutely incredible. Mm. When it hadn't been um, absolutely smashed apart by, um, you know, the chill filtering and all that nonsense. But um, it was fabulous, and I would implore people to go and try stuff was like it, that. Was as it I, cast as, I strength as well? Was it, or was it high yeah, ABV? Uh, it was. No, I lied. It was forty-three uh, percent, okay. and even still, it was incredible at that. I mean, that's another yeah. thing, isn't it? That, um, you get this snobbery behind ABV as well. Yeah. And and especially the sort of the, the yeah. forty percenters, which are the blends, which you know mainly are, and the, and the lower, not lower end, but the the stuff at the lower end of the market comes in at forty percent, and you get that sort of snobbery as well. I mean, I was watching, um, I was watching Ralphie, wasn't I, just before we uh, set up, which I probably shouldn't have been doing, but I did. Um, but he was talking about old Pulteney 12, um, and that's coming in at, at 40%, and he was saying, you know, it, it's a good whiskey. He'd only give it another couple of marks if it was just slightly higher ABV. So, I mean, something at that level, um, which is completely accessible to everyone, uh, pretty much. I mean, it's not overly priced. I can't remember off the top of the head how much it is, but it's... It's that sort of snobbery as well, isn't it? That he's he's taking away like you know. It, I appreciate it's forty percent. Maybe they could do more with it. Taste a bit better with forty three, but it's still not a bad whiskey at forty percent. But I think uh, other people uh, would maybe argue otherwise. That anything at forty percent maybe tastes a bit watery, especially I mean bourbon wise. Personally, I'm starting to, the more and more bourbons that I've tried, um, I'm finding that the higher ABV bourbons carry a hell of a lot more flavour than the 40 percenters. Uh, if you watched my me jack off, um, <laughs> <laughs> then... My favourite video of yours. <laughs> my my favourite video. Uh, then... You know that 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 was a really good blind test, and I was able to. You know, I mean, you could pick it out quite easily. Just that three percent more, especially in bourbon, that a lot more flavour came from a higher ABV bourbon than than a forty percent now. I think uh, one of the other big problems that we have with Scotch is um, they uh, they should have a bit more parity on how many times a barrel has been used. You know, obviously with 
bourbon you've got that you've got the virgin oak uh, and then you've got like you got your first fill and then whatever after that you, you and your you bad your bad blends if we go back to that um and the uh and the, and the sort of basic single malts they're going to be like second third fourth fill they're going to flog those barrels to the ends of their of their life so then get the maximum value out of that barrel and that's the other thing as well that we can't be we can't be sure what we're going to get you know, like exactly that a bourbon versus a uh, a good classic aged Scotch. It's just there's no comparison between the two. The two different beasts. The wood element is there. I mean, you know, again, look at this. That's just that's all natural coloured yeah. Jack Daniels. That is. Uh, God knows how many years that is. I I imagine it's probably about eight to nine or something like that. But you just don't get that in Scotch because we're not using new oak. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I think yeah. that's probably more important than the percentage because it's when you get you, those forty percent you're talking about. Uh, again, like the cynical side of me comes out, and I think, well, like a Glenfiddich twelve is a great example. Again, really nice whiskey, but it, it's forty percent. It's chill filtered. It's probably added color. It's probably second or third f- refill as a bulk, and maybe a bit of you know first fill in there as well to keep the keep the levels up. Um, and I, I, for my money, I would much rather have something like like this. On the shelf for rare occasions. Strange. Yeah, I mean, it, it's maybe not. Yeah, it's not really related to the the subject in hand. But I'm finding more and more, the more I delve into it, that to be honest, the most important ingredient in whiskey is wood. Yep. Fundamentally, yep. And, you know, that's it. The the barrel itself. That's that's it. If you've got a crap barrel. It's not going to be great whiskey. If it's a good barrel, it's going to be great whiskey. That seems to be the case with a hell of a lot of stuff that I'm trying and and looking into. You know. Yeah, I think that's probably true as well. And a lot of these newer distilleries that are coming out know that, uh, and they're making efforts at like even recharring cut old casks to get a bit more life into them. Uh, but yeah, spending a little bit more money on the cask selection is important for sure. And people like, you know, again, picking on Diageo, why not? Um, that they, they have they're so many casks, so many casks, it's unreal. That if they've got a bad one in there, they just chuck it in with the rest of it and it will just even itself out. You know, we're talking a few parts in a million. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, they don't care about, um, you know, like the, the, the upper echelon of, of whiskey drinkers. They're just, they're, they're on about bulk, bulk profits and mm. stakeholder appeasement and things like that, you know, it's... Which is a shame. You know, you want whiskey drinkers for the whiskey drinkers making whiskey for the whiskey drinkers. That's what you want. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, who uh, who was it? Someone said about it was. Uh, I think it might have been the uh, forest. The forest distillery guys. I was talking to the new dram drinker guys about that, and they're, they're, and they're just like that. They don't want the, the big exposure. They just want to make whiskey for whiskey drinkers, and that's it. Brilliant. Love it. Love that. Yeah, that's great. That's the way. That's the way it should be. Definitely. What. I mean, Jay, in, in America, obviously, like, doesn't bourbon have to be in new new barrels every time, doesn't it, I think? Yeah, they can only use new new oak barrels, yep. And it has to be at least 40% uh, and, and then no higher than uh, 80%. Yeah. So, yeah, 160 proof. So, yeah. It has to be at least 51% corn. Uh and it has to be made in America. Those are the main the main rules. America. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, that's a common misconception. People uh, here tend to think that it has to be just made in Kentucky to be officially titled bourbon, yeah. and that's that's not true. But it does have to be made in America to be called bourbon. Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> yeah, and that's most Tennessee whiskeys yeah. could be titled could be called a bourbon, but they choose. To label themselves as Tennessee yeah, whiskeys. Weird, weird charcoal filtering thing. But isn't it as it mm. dickle that um is charcoal filtered as well, isn't it? I think. And they're they're in yeah. Yeah. Kentucky way as well. I believe I believe so. But I think they call Yeah, they're out of the Tennessee and I believe they do charcoal filter. And I think they're also a sour mash like the Jack Daniels is yeah. as well, aren't they? Mm-hmm. But it tastes completely different. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, they don't taste anywhere near the same, even though, like you would say, it's a sour mash, it's charcoal filtered, um, total uh, different kettle of fish. There's no comparison between them at all. 
Nice mash bill as well, isn't it? I mean, that's always going to change it with bourbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and most most bourbons tend to be sour mashes. You see a lot more sour mash bourbons than you do sweet mash bourbons. Um, so, yeah, and it's amazing how much they vary uh, from brand to brand or even within the same brand. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to participate in a barrel pick and just, you know, the same product from barrel to barrel uh, vastly different uh, flavor profiles from each other. Mm. Um, so that's like you were saying, Chris, with the, the wood being kind of the most important ingredient, you can really see it in those cases. Yeah. Uh, let's have a little look at the chat. I've sort of been looking, but not ignoring it. Um, been trying to, yeah, been trying to get the chat going. So I mean, that's all right, isn't it? Uh, all about um, whiskey freedom. Uh, hiya, how you doing? Uh, Luna, I haven't said hello properly, but how you doing? Uh, da, da, da. All about the wood. I can hear Waterford screaming. Yeah, I mean they're doing great things, aren't they, Waterford? But um, yeah, my comment on yeah, all about the wood. It, but it is. It seems to be like wood is one of the most thing, most important things. Bizarre. Uh, da, 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 seems. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Johnny's saying E150 in large volumes adds bitterness to the liquid. Oh, oh, Gibbs is in. Oh, hi, Paul. How you doing? Uh, back from playing crib. People still play crib. Use matchsticks or toothpicks. Paul plays crib. Oh, well, yeah, Paul. Clearly, Paul. <laughs> He's on his by himself in the corner. <laughs> uh, he was watching while he was playing crib. 15 2, 15 3. 15. I don't, I don't even know what crib is. <laughs> uh, no, it's a card game and you get it's a, the points. It's a British thing, don't worry. It's, it's like cricket. We don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a waste of time that is. Um, not like rugby. <laughs> World Cup coming up next month as well. That'd be good. Game about those Aussies winning. Oh, they beat New Zealand, didn't they? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I haven't been watching it. But the funny thing is, I think uh, actually uh, in September, I'll be going to Japan. And the World Cup, I think, is either just finishing or it's going on while I'll be in Japan. So that's pretty interesting. It's mid-September, I think, and then goes on for well over a month. Oh, okay, yeah, so it'll probably be starting be while good. I'm try, there. Try and get tickets. Be good. Yeah. Go and watch England. There's much more other things I'd rather do. Go and watch England beat <laughs> Wales or run Australia. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have we got? Uh, Somebody's asking a question. Can we win on the days we're like, ah, oh, uh, oh, when's the giveaways? Should we do the giveaways now? Everyone? Do the giveaways! <laughs> do the giveaways! Oh, Mark Slinger's in as well. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I did see you earlier. I didn't ignore you, but I did forget. Uh, yeah, giveaways. <laughs> uh, so we're doing giveaways uh, every day this week. Um, Hopefully, if I can get enough stuff together. Uh, today is, I'm just going to give away some coins, uh, whiskey hats, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the reverse is blank. So if I, whoever gets them, I will give you a little message on the back. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, is there anybody in the chat? Shout now if you want to be entered into the draw. I have a list. Uh, it's old school. I haven't got Excel like Roy or anyone else. Um, but yeah, uh, new Dram Jinka, you can't have one. Um, Ebhead, what about that jersey? This uh, Whiskey Freedom mentioned earlier is um, Waratahs, which is New South Wales uh, rugby team, uh, which I picked up when I was over there. In Australia. Uh, yeah, Paul Gibbs. Paul Gibbs, you've got one as well, haven't you? And Mark Slimming, I'm pretty sure you've got one as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, a few people on my list. Um, 
as I said. Uh, Rose Robbins. She wants one, apparently. <laughs> Hi, Max. Max is watching the video, by the way. No nonsense can want, uh, donate a coin as well. Okay. Thanks, Vin. Uh, Whiskey Quest one. Like, everybody wants one. Uh, should, should we just get everybody's in and get one? Do I do that? I can do enough. I got enough. Yeah? That a giveaway? Go for it. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you don't do it, then are people going to watch the rest of the week? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right, that's true, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what next, yes, tomorrow's giveaway is, but... Oh, I know, yeah, I know why. Oh, yeah, coin, nothing on the back. It, it's not as good as you... these coins. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, do do a giveaway today, and I'll um, I'm just reaching for it now. Oh. I'll I'll give away the lowest number that I've I've given away so far, which is uh, which is number eleven. So you can chuck that to whoever wins your coin as well, and I'll send that to them. I'm going to give one to everyone, so... Are you going to give a... Oh, no, I'm not doing that. You've got to pick a winner. <laughs> i tell you what. We'll... That's, that's, the, that's the first prize. We'll add it to the star prize at the end of the week, yeah? Okay, let's do that. Do that. Number 11 is going in star prize at the end of the week, uh, which, uh, star prize, it's the big main giveaway at um, the end of the week. Uh, I will hint there may or may not be a bottle involved. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so that'd be cool. What is it? Sorry. <laughs> can can so I enter it? now? Can you enter now? <laughs> Everybody that's entering today will be in there. So I'll write it all down. Uh, who we got? I guess Luna. <laughs> You're so enthusiastic about this giveaway, Chris. I, get, I know. This, I guess, well, this we'll is a lot of postage, isn't it? Really, to be honest. <laughs> uh, in fact, it pans up who has who's got one already. Who's got a coin already? Paul Gibbs, you've definitely got one. Finn's got one. It Finn's got a very one. nice one. Uh, Airpad, Rolf, have you got one? Rolf, I'm going to give yours to you next month to save on postage. <laughs> <laughs> it's <just> tight. <laughs> Rolf London. I'll write that down. Uh, new Dram Drinker, you're not getting one. You've already got one. <laughs> uh, Whiskey Shed, Toby. Toby, you'll get one in London as well. Whiskey Freedom's asking you giving away a bottle of the White Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Diageo are as well. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to give it away after Vin's um, comment of uh, Vin's video. Was he influenced 175,000 people? Yeah, I definitely <laughs> did not. <laughs> uh, Greg's got one. Right, you can uh, have one. Should... Mark Sling has got a T-shirt. Awesome. I haven't seen that T-shirt out and about yet, which is a bit disappointing. <laughs> Obviously, click the link. But click the link below if you'd like a T-shirt. You know, you can buy them. Really good. Uh, I don't know Antonio as well. I'd, I'll get one to Antonio. I tell you what, I do. I'll look at this tomorrow because it's stupid me watching me write stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're I mean, still here. So professional. So professional. I, I, I'm so I reckon Vin should put in a bottle of Fujikai, a little sample bottle of Fujikai. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't have a bottle. I would love to send samples out to everybody, honestly, but it, it's so expensive. It's fifty-five pound um, yeah. for something. It's really bad. Please, please buy it. Try it. I think on Master of Malt, if you're in the UK, whatever, on Master of Malt, you can buy a sample of it. I'm sure of it. I, everyone should do it. Fujikai. <laughs> If it's not a uh, new drink, drink a coin. yeah, Luna, yes, you do get a coin just for being here because it's cool, and I've got loads. Uh, Anthony and Nikki, I can't, I can't give away baby wipes; those are like gold right now. So <laughs> I have to, I have to keep as many of those as possible. <laughs> uh, so have you got any um, soiled nappies or diapers you could send them instead? That I could do. I, I have plenty of those. <laughs> got a shit ton of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Literally. <laughs> Uh yeah, yeah. Everyone will get everyone will get one here. Yeah, bourbon and baby, you'll get one. Andrew, I'll try and send one to Australia. <laughs> it's quite it's quite it easy. Might, it might might get lost in the mail. Yeah, it got lost <laughs> in the mail somehow. Here's the proof of postage. <laughs> Oh, sorry, the the dingo ate my coin. Dingo ate my baby. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark Sling. Oh, cool. You wore. It. Did Eric Wait comment on my T-shirt? Like, who's that guy? He must be great. Um, bourbon scented wipes. Oh, this, this is descending into toilet humor now. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, that's probably yeah. That's probably a good. Place to finish. I mean, any other comments on the image of whiskey? The one thing that I was going to say as well, age statement. Age statement. So I think age statement has become a very big thing for All whiskey story. Yeah. So non-age statement. So NAS. Also, yeah, non-age statement. I mean, I know um, in Australia, I think in America is the same. I think the, the minimum age of, uh, say, for whiskey is two years. Um, and obviously, it's, uh, it's become three years now in the in the UK. Uh, I mean, you can get such good quality whiskey out of such a, a young product. I just wish that people probably would um, start to add an age statement to bottle, regardless of how old um, something is. In in the bourbon world, as far as their rules are concerned, it can be kind of tricky. Um, because if they're mixing a bunch of different batches together, um, say they're mixing some 10-year-old stuff, but then they throw in a couple of barrels of six-year-old stuff, if they want to mm. state that, they, they have to say it's a six-year-old product. Um, so that's why a lot of distilleries, especially in the boom, with the, the recent boom going on, have kind of stepped away from age statements um, because, you know, they, they, they're having to mix in their younger stuff. Um, but here for bourbon, if it is under four years, they have to say how old it is on the label. Um, so, so if it's really young, four years or less, they have to say. If it's over four years, they don't have to say. So, um, but yeah, you can have stuff that's, that's four years old and it's fantastic. And you can have stuff that's 16 years old and it's terrible. So it's all, it's all subjective, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing, isn't it? Subjectivity of whiskey. Uh, oh, Neil's uh, in from uh, Whiskey Talk. Yeah, Hi, Neil. Neil will be in on Saturday in the live stream. Mark's off. See Mark, the one. And what else we got? Oh, Johnny's not coming to the Glen Scotia tasting. It's a shame. Uh, but yeah, Naz wise, I mean, one of my sort of favourites, or one one of the one whiskies that pops up on Amazon a lot uh, in the cheap stuff. You know, it comes out for like twenty five quid, doesn't it? Um, is Lefroy quarter cask? Now, I mean, that's non yep. non age statement, but I mean, that's that's a great great whiskey. Really, really nice. Really do enjoy that one. Really comes across as like I always say it, but there's massive buttery note nose to it. Um, and that's yeah, that's non age statement. And but to be honest, I haven't had a Lefroy ten for quite a long time. Maybe well over a year. Um, I mean, I haven't really compared them too much. I mean, comparing... I mean, when you're, you're on a whiskey journey like I am, um, I sort of end up not going back to whiskies too much. I mean, is that, that... That seems to be quite a, you know, a thing where you, you'll try one, but I mean, I'll get one or two whiskies that I will go back to or I will have multiple bottles of. And I think that's sort of what what the journey sort of takes me on, really. I mean, I, I would buy a Lefroy 10 again, but 
I'd also buy the Lefroy Quartercast because it's 25 quid in the Amazon sale. <laughs> and I'd buy that yep. over that because it's cheap and I know what I'm getting and I know it'd be good. I think from memory as well, the Quartercast, I think it does have a higher ABV on it as well, doesn't it? And I think the flavour is much more, it has a much more intense flavour than what the, the 10 year old does as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, Nas versus yeah, H statements is, is another tricky subject, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, all blends are, are Nas, aren't they? Fundamentally, most of them. But then you get most a lot of, of them yeah, you get age statement blends. I don't know. Talking crap. But yeah, I've, I've got a great example here. I was talking about it earlier. The uh, the Ardbeg Kurviakin. Um, no age statement, but there's a very, very, very important number on here, and that is 57.1, uh, and that that's a really good number. Um, I got this for in a, in a in an airport for about 60 pounds, I think, and it's usually about 70 over here, which is, that's just a lot of money. But it's so good, and we were talking earlier about the colouring of it. Uh, there you go. Mm. It's yeah. not even that light, really, is it? I haven't got a bit of paper, you know, like they do, like they do on the YouTube. Like they're doing the YouTube um, or uh, and turning yeah. up against this wall. Yeah, up against the map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's I'm not I'm not bothered about no age statement. It's the same thing about the blends. It's the same thing about the color. Uh, and I'm, I put it in the comments earlier. Bad whiskey is bad, no matter what. No matter what it's got on the bottle, what, yeah. the, what age statement, no matter what added color it's got. Good whiskey is good, and that's what we're here to do. I think is is that we can talk about no age statement whiskey, and I can I can categorically say that it's good or not. You know, I like it versus I don't, um, and that's the important part is is the actual liquid inside. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what's on on the label, um, even if it's just got, like, we're going to talk about marketing a bit, won't we? But even if it's got a huge, again, this Corbiakin's got this thing about this whirlpool. Uh, and some history in there that no one cares about. Not don't not bothered about that. Brett um, cares, but whiskey, whiskey is good. <laughs> you care. We well, you, you can read the box. Just don't read it out yeah. to us on your channel. <laughs> uh, Obi saying whiskey shared. Uh, I think age statement justifies a price. If you know a whiskey is twelve years old and you see another Nas for the same price, you wonder how it can be justified. It could be half the age. I would, but in... yeah, I don't know. Some age statement stuff. Apple or twelve, for instance, I wouldn't buy that again. That's age statement, um, and I'd buy a blend over that most days if there was something at the same price. But you'd have to try it first to know, wouldn't you? I mean, that's that's the other thing as well. What's a... In some instances as well, I mean, I think you'll have some, I mean, it's not all of them, I think it's only a rare few, but then you'll have some um, NAS uh, whiskies that are actually made up of much older whiskies than, uh, I mean, I think the Lafroy Law, I think was one that's made up, well, I can't remember what the age statements were, but of quite old stock, but then they would have a, a, a young age one in there and... Um, like you said, if they were to have to put an age statement on it, well, then it would have to be the minimum age requirement, not putting on an 18 or a 21-year-old label. Yeah. I mean, um, Greg was telling me the other day about um, Glendronic 12, but, like, there's one with a white label and not a red label. It's very confusing, but it was before they got taken over or somebody else was involved. And their stock was like, they put like 18 year old stock into the 12 year old and stuff like that. Um, just to get rid of it and make up the numbers, I guess. Or try and like rearrange things or I, I don't know how they, why they don't. But apparently that's like a, a really interesting 12 year old and is maybe considered better to the the newer 12 year old even though the new 12 year old is is really good whiskey as well but um yeah i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> you can't edit now can you huh? you can't edit now no i can't edit but, you know, 
Edit, edit the waffle. Un- uncut review. Uncut reviews, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's... there's Actually, I was going to ask... There's lot... I, I think there's lots of non-age statement out there that's better than age dated stuff sometimes. And like uh, Jay was saying earlier about McKellen 12, I mean, nothing to write home about, really. It didn't inspire him to go and and get other McAllens. Or nope. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah non-age statement compared to age statement is is a tricky one as well. And it, but it's all again, it's it's trying it, isn't it? It's trying whiskey, trying different things. All you can do. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely no shortage of whiskey on the shelves to buy. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I think uh, let's call it a night. I think let's call it a stream. Um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Or well, I will, anyway. Um, Andrew will be back on Wednesday. Thank you very yep. much to Jay for joining us. Brilliant to have you on. Thanks uh, for having me. Everybody, please go and watch Bourbon and the Baby. Great, great fun. Uh, and yeah, you'll learn about some bourbon, uh, which we should all be drinking as well. Uh, very much thank you to Vin PF himself. My name is Vin PF. My Vin name is Vin PF. My name is Vin PF. <laughs> My name is Vin PF. My name is Vin PF. Yeah, brilliant. You want some more? My name is Vin PF. Wait till Alan's on, all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, thank you very much, Vin. Uh, it was a real pleasure having you on. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, everybody who is in the chat and who used the hashtag on Twitter and Instagram will receive a coin if I deem it necessary. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I don't know if anybody... Do you want to say any words? Anyone else? I think probably, again, just to thank everybody for um, for joining us in on the chat. And just uh, thank you, Chris, for, um, say, for hosting us. So, again, yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, join... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jay, sorry. Oh, no, just saying cheers, everyone. Anyone else? No? No? <laughs> Anyone else? Me. Uh, <laughs> cheers, everyone. For, thanks for having me on, Chris. It's been a, a blast. Uh, wish you all the luck for this week. It's going to be pretty intense for you, and I think you're probably going to regret it at the end. I think I um, probably will. Especially <laughs> all the coins you're giving away. Wife. <laughs> oh, did you not know that it was all week until just now? <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell her. Yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Good luck to you. Hopefully everyone sticks around to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please, everyone, join me tomorrow where we have uh, John, the Whiskey Neighbour, uh, all the way from Alberta, Canada, uh, and some guy called Dave, and Nikki, uh, I think she'll be involved as well, and someone else, Toby, <laughs> from Whiskey Shared. I did. There is so many people. I've been doing like loads of banners and all this sort of stuff. It's it's in my head somewhere. Uh, but yeah, brilliant. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And let's let's all point at the screen. Point at the screen, everyone. That's the last drop.